Okay, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Today I will be the moderator uh, of this session. Uh, normally, as uh, a diplomat and ambassador, I uh, am invited always as a guest, but this time we make a change because we have two valuable uh, guest historians here today. So, uh, this is our uh, last session uh, from uh, Turkish side. Uh, and uh, as you know, Turkey is participating for the first time in our bilateral history uh, with India as a guest of honor country in a festival, a literature festival in India. So we are also celebrating the 100th anniversary of the proclamation of the Republic of Turkey. Ladies and gentlemen, a century ago on 29 October 1923, Following a long liberation war, Turkish Grand National Assembly proclaimed the Republic of Turkey and named Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, who had led the liberation war to victory, as our first president. This marked an end to a bitter and arduous period of beginning of an epoch in recent history. Since then, Turkey has undergone comprehensive and far reaching political, economic, and social reforms. I am proud to say that in her 100th birthday, Turkey, strengthened by her economic and political power, is a secular democratic state, governed by the rules of law, upholding universal values, such as peace, freedom, social progress, equal rights, and human dignity. Turkey stands as a bridge between East and West, a nation with a rich cultural heritage and a dynamic, forward-looking society. Situated at the, one of the most troublesome regions in the world, Turkey's successful transformation is perhaps more visible than ever. It, in an <coughs> inherently unstable geography, Turkey is able to remain a beacon of stability and prosperity under the leadership of our president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. This, is of course, this of course calls for the proactive, dynamic, uh, and humanitarian approaches that are visible into the Turkish foreign policy. With more than 260 missions abroad, Turkey is the fifth country globally in terms of the number of diplomatic representation. Following Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's motto, peace at world and peace at home, it shows the humanitarian aspect of our policy. Turkey hosts now the greatest number of refugees globally. So as a founding member of G20, Turkey is today among the world's largest economies defense industry is rising rapidly and industrial Turkish industrial goods are preferred in many European countries. And Turkey is the fourth biggest country, uh, most visited country uh, in terms of tourism. So last year almost 60 million foreign tourists visited Turkey and Turkey is becoming also a destination, a very important destination for Indian tourists as well. So. Today we will uh, discuss not the developments in Turkey, not uh, the, the picture of Turkey today, but more historical uh, aspects and uh, how Turkish and the relations between Turkish and Indian people developed during the 100 years uh, old journey of Turkey. So uh, our uh, speakers, uh, you have already known about them. We are very happy. Mr. Kutluturk is from uh, Turkey. So uh, that's why my uh, first uh, question uh, will uh, give to uh, Mr. Kutluturk. So first of all, welcome to India. So uh, Turks had a legendary war of liberation. And uh, we know that Turkish war of liberation inspired many countries and colonies as well. And after the liberation war against so many powerful uh, nations, uh, Turkish Republic was proclaimed and then undergo so many reforms, revolutionary reforms during the first years. And all the process, please co correct me if I'm uh, mistaken, 
All the process is called by Indian lecturers as Turkish Revolution, right? You like to use this term Turkish Revolution. It uh, includes Turkish War of Liberation and also the revolutionary reforms uh, in the early years of the Republic. So uh, these are very important because uh, they uh, lay foundation of the Republic of Turkey today. So uh, please tell us more about Turkish re uh, Revolution. Okay. Uh, dear Excellency, thank you so much for your kind question. Before the answering this question, I would like to some, say something on this panel. Firstly, I would like to thank to the organizer who made these important events, because in these days, as you said, we are celebrating our 100 years of Republic of Turkey. That is why this panel is very meaningful and significant for our tradition. That is why I would like to thank to all committee members. And we know that, dear ladies and gentlemen, uh, to produce such a panel, there are important contributions given by our dear ambassador. That is why I would like to thank to our dear ambassador excellency. So I believe that such kind of events make important contribution between each sides. Uh, before answering the question uh, regarding this question, I would like to share an important tradition found in our country. Dear listeners, to understand our importance on freedom and, you know, democracy, this event is very crucial. According to our tradition, before every official meeting, we should submit our inner salutation to those who fight for the sake of our country. We call this, this kind of people as Ghazi or Shahid, who sacrifice who lost their lives in the fight for the freedom movement. That is why we respect this kind of inner, this kind of distinguished person. So one of the leader of our Republic of Turkey, that was Mustafa Ghazi, Mustafa Kemal Pasha. That is why we called him as Ghazi, because of this struggle for our freedom movement. So regarding your question, I need to say that to understand our huge and strong and rich history of Republic of Turkey, some important, you know, uh, stage should be known. One of them is, as you mentioned, reforms made by Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. This kind of reforms enable the development of democracy in Turkey. Maybe we can give some specific examples. After the independence of Republic of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk observed that in order to make a, you know, uh, proper development in all area, some significant renovations or reforms should be performed. This kind of reforms not only in the field of only democracy, in the field of only you know, policy. On the other hand, you can find basic uh, reforms in the area of politic, economy, you know, education, health, or you know, right of women. In here, maybe I would like to give a specific example regarding the, you know, education reforms. It is very important for us. Uh, there was a, you know, important reform called as national educational law. After acceptance of this law, different parts of the Turkey, new schools was opened, and including villages. At that time, when we checked the, you know, data, it is understood that the rate of literacy of Turkish people is very less. But after this kind of reforms taken in the area of education, our level of education decreased and increased by day by. And even today, when we check our official data, it is understood that the rate of literacy people of Turkey is more than 97%. The number is very huge. And I know that the station can be compared with here. In Kerala also, the number of people who knows and to educate is around this, you know, rate. It means 100 maybe or, you know, less than 100. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, I understood that because of the Kemal Atatürk's reforms, our educational level developed in a short time. Another important, you know, reforms, dear Excellency, 
may be stayed here in the field of rights of women. We call this right of voting. At that time, there is no any right for women to elect or to be elected for, you know, uh, parliament. But after 30, 1933, 1934, uh, Mustafa Kemal Pasha gave some rights for women to be elected and to be elect. According to our official data, we understood that after the election of, you know, 1935, the number of ladies who joined Turkish, you know, uh, parliament is around 18. I need to repeat again. In 1935, there was an election. After this election, around 18 Turkish ladies, women, attend our, you know, uh, parliaments. This kind of ladies came from different parts of the Turkey, north, south, you know. So it shows that all, you know, Turkish people uh, welcomed Atatürk's reforms. And I give last example, maybe. Uh, as you know, last election occurred last year, 2023. When we check the data, it is understood that the number of ladies who selected as a deputy you know, as a parliamentary in our, you know, uh, country is around more than 120. It is a very huge number, dear leaders, dear ladies and gentlemen. So this kind of contribution, you know, because of the Atatürk's efforts. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the detailed explanation. And I would like to just add one sentence. Turkish women obtained the right to elect be long before many uh, European countries, before the Switzerland, before the France. Yes. You know, uh, this is very important reform. So, uh, Mr. Aftab uh, Kemal Pasha. Uh, Mr. Kutluturk talked about uh, the reforms and then he mentioned also the meaning of Ghazi. What does Ghazi mean? And he mentioned also Ghazi Mustafa Kemal Pasha. So, before I ask you my first question, I would like to tell you to our audience uh, the secret behind your name. So you have a very interesting story, I know. I would like uh, you to show the story with our uh, audience. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, there is a short story uh, behind my name. Uh, which my full name is Aftab Kamal Pasha, but my original name was Ghazi Mustafa Kamal Pasha. It was named after the Turkish leader uh, the story goes like this. My grandfather, who was a medical doctor, Dr. B. M. Lal Ahmad Khan in Mysore of Karnataka, he was a medical doctor and uh, my grandmother tells me that uh, he had gone to Turkey before the First World War as part of the medical mission and he stayed there for quite some time and uh, came back and uh, he was greatly influenced uh, with the Turkish revolution under uh, Atatürk. Uh, I still remember as a small kid uh, in Mysore, uh, uh, there was a fairly large photo of Atatürk uh, and he used to tell me stories which I can't uh, recall, but I definitely remember uh, his great passion and uh, support to the Atatürk. So, uh, I was named after uh, the Ghazi in uh, Turkey because he was, uh, uh, from my grandmother, I learned that he was greatly impressed uh, about uh, the achievements of uh, Turkey uh, in the face of uh, relentless uh, attempts by the Western countries to divide uh, Turkey uh, after the uh, First World War, a huge empire. Uh, which was broken into pieces and the Asia Minor part of Turkey also was under threat of being uh, taken over by Greece and other uh, imperial uh, powers. So uh, he, there are stories which I've heard from my grandmother so that still make an impact, huge impact uh, about how countries like India, Turkey have uh, withstood uh, the onslaughts of uh, imperial uh, domination. Yes. So that will be also my question to you. So thank you very much indeed. And uh, Mr. Aftab Kemal Pasha, you are not the only person who was named after uh, Mustafa Kemal Pasha because the admiration for Turkish war of liberation was so big in India at that time. 
and uh, because it was the source of inspiration for uh, Indian independence as well. And uh, I know that uh, postcards, there are a lot of postcards, even matchboxes, uh, decorated with Mustafa Kemal Atatürk's uh, photos. And uh, I found also some archives letters, uh, one of them, for example, written by a primary school in Calcutta, sent to, uh, to uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, saying that they changed their names to Mustafa Kemal Pasha Primary School. So it happens in 1920s. And uh, this is not just uh, such uh, romantic support, but there are also material support. Indian people uh, really support the Turkish War of Liberation. There was fundraising campaigns all over in India, in, uh, especially in Kerala. Uh, in Friday sermons, people are uh, invited to pray for Turkey, for Turkey's liberation. And fundraising campaign was carried out. There was an article in Kerala that time, a fundraising campaign in order to buy a aeroplane for Mustafa Kemal army. So the interest is so really big. But I would like to uh, hear from you some examples about this support. How Turkish war of liberation was uh, seen in India that time. Yes, Turkish uh, liberation was a great inspiration for the uh, freedom struggle here, especially the Indian National Congress leaders were greatly impressed, uh, not only Jawaharlal Nehru, but also the main architect of uh, Indo-Turkish relations was Maulana Abul Kalam Azad. He had visited uh, Turkey, uh, even the Ottoman uh, Turkey, and he had brought about uh, two uh, Urdu and Arabic dailies from Calcutta, where he was based most of the time. So, Maulana Azad was the real architect, and uh, he played an important role, especially on uh, Nehru who was in charge of foreign affairs of the Congress uh, party. And before the war, uh, during the Khilafat movement, there was an all India mobilization of uh, resources, funds. Uh, uh, it is estimated that more than 150 million pounds was uh, uh, given by Indians. Many women came forward with donating their jewels, uh, gold, silver, and whatever they could, particularly from Malabar, I remember uh, uh, the families of uh, Bibi uh, Fatima, uh, if I'm correct, uh, the successor of Sultan Ali Raja. Uh, that family also devoted uh, a huge amount and uh, the Kunali Markar family also mobilized uh, huge resources uh, to be passed on because these uh, rulers here in Malabar had direct relations with the Ottoman Sultans in the 18th, uh, second half of 18th century. And there was brisk trade, uh, especially in uh, pepper and other uh, spice products between uh, uh, this part of India and uh, Ottoman uh, Sultan. Because after 1453, when the Turks uh, uh, took over Constantinople and renamed it as Istanbul, uh, spices were in great demand uh, uh, in Europe, and Turkey was the hub for transport of uh, spices uh, through Basra, uh, which was part of the Ottoman Empire. So Malabar has played a very important role in mobilizing funds uh, for Turkish liberation, Khilafat. Uh, and because of these funds, because of uh, this wealth, uh, in fact, a bank was uh, established, Turkey IS Banksy, which still exists uh, uh, as an important bank from the funds uh, which were transferred uh, by the British from London to Istanbul. It's a public sector bank uh, which has played a very important role in the liberation struggle, as I mentioned, uh, because the challenge uh, for Ataturk was huge uh, because they thought that Turkey is defeated and uh, it should be carved out into small cantons uh, like they did uh, in West Asia. The British and the French divided the Arab world into so many parts, which is now the main cause for conflict in, uh, in uh, West Asia. So in that way, Ataturk defended the territorial uh, integrity because of the huge contribution made by Indians. I am not saying only the Muslims. Muslims were an important part who contributed, but all uh, Indians uh, participated. They sympathized with the struggle the Turkish uh, uh, people were going through in their hour of need. 
So it was a mass mobilization of resources. Uh, much more could have been done. In fact, the British uh, discouraged the mobilization of funds uh, because they were alarmed that the support uh, uh, Turkey, Turkish people got from the Indian masses uh, because they identified uh, 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 their own struggle with the Turkish people who were going through with their the struggle. So there was this uh, convergence of uh, interest between Indians uh, who looked at their plight because of the British uh, domination here and also what the British were play playing in uh, Asia Minor after the First World War. So there is this foundation for Indo-Turkish uh, people's solidarity which emerged during the First World War and I still believe that remains the rock-solid foundation for people-to-people -people contact and there is uh, tremendous uh, friendship, show of uh, support for whatever Turkey is presently doing, whether pursuing an independent foreign policy, although being part of NATO, establishing good relations with Russia, China and uh, other countries uh, and also their support to people in Gaza and other uh, causes in the third world. So in that way, we see uh, the people uh, sympathizing and sharing the concerns of both the Turkish people along with India. Thank you very much for ex uh, detailed explanation. Now, uh, Mr. Kutu Turk, you heard uh, Mr. Pasha. Do you have anything to add his remarks? And especially, I would like uh, you to tell to our audience uh, the Indian support for Turkey independence war from the Turkish perspective, how, how Turkish people received or uh, perceived this help from India? What was the reaction in Turkey? Okay, I say thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Kemal Pasha focused on important you know, topics. Maybe I can include some of them. To understand the support given by Indian people to Ottomans and you know, new young Turkish generations, we should categorize this kind of support in three titles according to my research. This kind of contribution occurred in three different fields. The first one is maybe I can say that some organizations was, you know, performed. One of them was is Indian Khilafat Movement as mentioned by, you know, Dr. Kemal Pasha. This movement has different branch, different parts of the India, you know, even Kerala, there is a sub-branch of that movement. At the time of Republic of Turkey, many Indian peoples collect huge, you know, uh, money for our country. And if you go some district found in Kerala, there is a, you know, Mazar Makber, in which you can find some tombs, which, you know, related to this kind of uh, representatives who are members of the Khilavet member of, you know, Kerala district. Second important, you know, branch to understand this contribution or this, you know, support is some newspapers, journals, you know, magazines was, were produced. In this kind of journals, magazines, newspapers like Akbar, you know, Habdil Majid, you can find this kind of articles regarding, you know, Turkish uh, struggle against foreign powers. And maybe last one is, uh, we call this Hilal Ahmer or Hilal Ahmer Constitution regarding, you know, health care. In the beginning of 1921, this institution was, you know, set up. One of the most important leaders of this Hilal Ahmer community was Dr. El Ansari, you know very well. He came to Turkey to recover some soldiers who, you know, impressed in our fight. So these three important points very crucial to understand this kind of, you know, contribution made by Indian people. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, there is a strong, you know, slogan, there is a strong, you know, term given by Ghazi Mustafa Kemal Pasha. I need to repeat here. In the beginning of War of Independence, Ghazi Mustafa Kemal Pasha set ill, you know, Samsun, a city found in the north part of Turkey. Here, my dear, you know, listeners, please take attention on this, you know, point. Ghazi said that the sovereignty of the nation will be obtained by nation itself. The liberation of the, any nation will be, you know, obtained, attained by the nation itself. Because of this kind of statements, Indian people understood that we need to make some struggle again uh, for our own independence. And 
there are some important figures who support, you know, uh, maybe Indians, this kind of helpings. I give you a specific example for you. When I check this topic in Ottoman and, you know, in Turkish archives, I observe that there is a significant letters which was written by Mustafa Kemal Pasha to Indian people. In this letter, Kemal Pasha give importance, you know, thanks to Indian people. One of the letters written in 1922, please check if you have, you know, time. In this letter, Mustafa Kemal Pasha focuses on that we are debt to Indian old people because of their, you know, huge contribution. And he said that because of this kind of aid, we can recover our, you know, basic sticks, our basic, you know, illness. And this kind of money used for the sake of, you know, orphans, children who, uh, you know, uh, fight against the uh, army. On the other hand, this kind of, you know, donations will be used or was used for the, some important reforms in the field of education, you know, in the field of health, some important, you know, economic institution was set up because of this kind of donations. So, in this letter, Atatürk also focused on that. It's very interesting for me because the date is 1922. So, we understood that Atatürk has a big vision. In this letter, he said that, I believe that in a short time, Indian people also attain their own liberation. So, that is enough. Okay, thank you very much because it will be my question to Mr. Uh, Kamal Pasha now. Uh, so we talked until now uh, during uh, independence war how it was uh, received here, uh, how was the reaction of Indian people, how was their support. Uh, it's really a historical uh, tie uh, bounding our nations. So now uh, another question related this, uh, to this issue. Uh, we know that uh, Turkish independence war was inspired by many countries and colonies all over the world, including India. And even uh, I would like to quote uh, a word uh, allocated to Mr. Uh, Mahatma Gandhiji, the father of Indians. He once said, I was believing God was an Englishman until Mustafa Kemal Atatürk has defeated them. So please, uh, can you please tell us about how inspired Turkish war of liberation uh, to for uh, to the Indian independence movement. Yes, uh, this is a very important uh, uh, issue because not only the father of the country Mahatma Gandhi, but also Jawaharlal Nehru, who was in charge of the foreign relations department of the Indian National Congress, along with Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, they were the three pillars uh, uh, who laid the foundation for Indo-Turkish uh, relations because uh, Turkey was the first country which uh, signed a friendship treaty <coughs> with the Soviet Union after its liberation uh, from the West uh, because uh, the entire uh, operation to bring down the Ottoman Empire was uh, seen by the Turkish people as a conspiracy uh, supported by some Arabs like Sharif Hussein of Mecca and uh, other tribal leaders who were supported by the British uh, in bringing down the Ottoman Empire. But what uh, really moved the Indian people was uh, not so much the disintegration of the Ottoman Empire, but after uh, uh, that, uh, going primarily to the Asia Minor part, that is Izmir, Gallipoli, uh, uh, near the Bosphorus and Dardanelles passes and the coastal areas of the Aegean Sea were also being targeted and uh, being uh, appropriated for uh, giving to agency. This stirred the Indian National Congress that uh, not only the Asia Minor part is being attacked, uh, they have uh, ideas to give it to Greece and uh, divide the Asia Minor part into bits and pieces. So this uh, uh, really moved uh, Jawaharlal Nehru. Uh, and uh, he was at the same time through his works uh, while he was in prison. He was uh, admiring the reforms uh, uh, which my colleague has highlighted, uh, not only uh, liberation of women, public sector and industrialization, education, so on and so forth. But what moved Nehru and Gandhi was the secularization of the Turkish Republic. As you know, 
the Turkish Sultan was not just the king or the ruler, he was also the Khalifa, the head of the Ummah. But uh, to transform that uh, Muslim uh, institution into a secular institution was greatly admired by the Indian national le leaders, including Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, who propagated this concept of secularization as very useful, as very appropriate in the Indian context of multi-religious, multi-ethnic, uh, uh, huge country, uh, which has diversity much more than uh, Turkey. So the concept of secularization of the Turkish Republic uh, 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 by Atatürk uh, appealed uh, to all the important uh, Congress leaders and uh, non-Congress leaders also. Subhash Chandra Bose also was attracted and even the Communist Party leaders were attracted to the concept of secularization, which became the founding, uh, uh, the, 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 the basic architecture of the Indian uh, Constitution, because Ambedkar also um, has made references to the secular aspect of the Indian uh, Constitution. So in that way, uh, the, the, the inspiration uh, for Indians uh, uh, and in the struggle uh, involving all communities in India was Turkey and the concept of secularization in the Turkish Republic, uh, which was uh, seen in the Grand National Assembly, where uh, all uh, people from uh, different communities in Turkey, whether they are uh, uh, Christians, Armenian Christians, or Jews, or uh, other communities, uh, minorities who were represented in the Grand National Assembly, which drafted and accepted many important reforms to solidify uh, and formalize the secular character. Uh, even uh, at the last 20 years when the AK party is in power, which is seen as a religious uh, oriented party, is uh, embedded to the secular principles. It, they are unshakable. Uh, every Turk uh, believes in the concept of secularization, no matter how deep his commitment to Islam or any other religion is. So the Turks are unified uh, under the concept of uh, uh, secular uh, nation. They may vote for uh, some other party, but basically the bedrock uh, and foundation of the Turkish Republic remains for the last hundred years, uh, no matter who rules, whether it is the military or the AK party or the uh, other parties who have uh, ruled. So in that way, this bond uh, between India, if India has to remain and progress uh, as an uh, important country, secularism uh, has remained, will remain uh, in future also as a unifying force uh, for the people of India who practice different religions uh, from different religious, uh, uh, ethnic uh, and linguistic uh, background. So in that way, both have learned from uh, each other and I think this is the bond that will remain an uh, enduring bond between the two uh, countries. Uh, I would also like to mention uh, uh, here uh, that uh, like uh, uh, how we suffered at the hands of the British and other colonial powers, especially the Portuguese, who were very cruel to this part of the uh, country. They bombed, the Portuguese bombed this place at least five times. When Vasco da Gama came and pressurized the Zamorin ruler here uh, to become a vassal of the King Emmanuel of Portugal, he refused. He said, I am an independent sovereign. And Vasco da Gama commented to the king that Calicut uh, is uh, at least 20 times or more wealthier than Lisbon. He was shocked to see this city very prosperous and uh, traders from all over the world, not just the Arabs or the Iranians, Persians or the Africans or the Chinese or any other, but throughout the world, this was an emporium of the world. But Vasco da Gama destroyed it, uh, bombed it uh, from the ships he had brought at least five times and his successors also. But uh, uh, that didn't deter the people uh, 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 to rebuild this again and again and again. And the same way the Turks also suffered at the hands of the Allied forces uh, who bombed many cities from Izmir to Basphorus, Istanbul, but they rebuilt uh, their cities. So that suffering at the hands of the imperial powers also is an important bond, Excellency, between the two countries. Uh,
it reminds them of their past suffering and their need to rebuild their lives and share the achievements between the two peoples. Oh, thank you very much. So the uh, close relation, people to people relations, started even before the Republic during Ottoman time. Uh, you, both of our speakers told about the Hilafet movement, which is a milestone in our relations, Turkish-Indian relations. So uh, yesterday you had a lecture about Princess uh, Durushehvar uh, of Hyderabad. And you have also a book about this. So uh, <clears throat> we have now a very limited time. Uh, but <clears throat> tell me the role of uh, uh, Ottoman Turkish sultans, like uh, Durushehvar Sultan, uh, Nilüfer uh, Sultan, or Princess Esra. So uh, they are Turks, but they are Indian princesses, but also Turkish princesses as well. What are their role in cementing our relations? Just with some words, please. Thank you so much. Yes, it is very significant sample to understand both relations between each sides. Uh, as you mentioned, you know, this story starts before the, uh, you know, uh, Republic of Turkey, last time of the Ottoman, and it goes on, it continues until the day of Republic of Turkey. That is why in order to understand these huge relations between India and Turkey, we need to focus on these kind of figures. Because Durushevar Sultan, maybe you know, I don't know very well, was married with the, you know, eldest son of Hyderabad Nizam, Mir Ali Osman Khan, called the seventh Nizam, and another important Ottoman Sultan, whose name was Nilufer, who was also got married with another, you know, son of Mir Osman Ali Khan. So these two important Turkish Sultans made important, you know, contribution on Hyderabad society. And for me, one of the most important, you know, side of these ladies was that they learned Urdu language in order to convey their message in a true, true way because they know that to uh, make a you know, good connection between local people, the vernacular language is the necessary. That is why they learned Urdu. On, on the other hand, Your Excellency, this kind of Turkish woman made important contributions on Hyderabad society in the field of education, health care, women rights, you know, so we need to focus on this kind of contribution to understand relationship between Turkey and Ottoman and, you know, Indians. Thank you very much. Uh, Professor Kemal Pasha, uh, you are author of uh, more than two dozens uh, book, uh, hundreds of uh, articles. Uh, so one of those books we see, India and Turkey, when was it published? This was, uh, this was a book uh, of, of more than five years of research work based on archival material. Uh, uh, what all my colleague has mentioned about uh, the role of Mahatma Gandhi, Jawaharlal Nehru, and uh, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad, and many other leaders, uh, what they said about Turkey, Ataturk, it's all documented. There is a chapter uh, going back to the 18th century uh, different parts of the country which had relations with the Ottoman Sultan, trade, uh, political, military relations, uh, down to the contemporary period uh, until uh, a few years ago I have documented the economic, trade, strategic, defense uh, relations. This, uh, this is the only comprehensive study of relations between the two countries uh, 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 which uh, is, uh, it was quite painstaking. Uh, because the material uh, uh, mostly is in Turkish uh, uh, and Arabic. So I had to translate, get it translated uh, from Istanbul, Ankara, Delhi, Hyderabad, Bombay, and also some material in Bangalore and other uh, private uh, collectors. So this uh, effort uh, needs to be widened and deepened because uh, there are many more uh, things uh, which many people don't know in different parts of the country, how uh, the, the people of Turkey uh, are bonded with the people of uh, India. Different, uh, uh, in different languages, in Bengali also, there are a lot of uh, uh, things uh, which have been uh, written in vernacular language there, uh, which needs to be probed and uh, uh, written. Uh, uh, so uh, 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 this uh, relationship is not just historical, but uh, if we have uh, fairly robust relations with uh, trade relations with Turkey and the number of Indians who visit uh, Turkey for a variety of purposes whose number is growing, 
it is because of the sheer uh, historical uh, uh, relations uh, which we have heard from our parents, grandparents, through books and uh, the many evidences uh, uh, which uh, exist in our uh, society which link the, the which uh, creates a bond between the Indian people and uh, the Turkish people. You can instantly strike a friendship with the Turkish people and there are so many words in Turkish which have uh, uh, their relevance in many Indian languages, not just Urdu, but also in Bengali, in here in Malayali language, Malayalam and Kannada or uh, even Marathi. Uh, because this language was used by soldiers uh, in the armies of many, more than 534 princely states. So this uh, uh, language uh, which came from Turkey is uh, dispersed in different uh, Indian languages, not to speak of Hindi uh, and other uh, uh, languages also, mostly in the Western uh, coast. So the linguistic uh, familiarity also is an important link. And uh, if you see the number of uh, Indian visitors as tourists uh, uh, who visit Turkey, it's uh, growing. Uh, and uh, on their way to Europe or to America, they would like to spend time in Istanbul. I have myself uh, been several times and I have seen uh, <coughs> the, 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 the Indian, uh, the interest of Turks uh, in learning Indian languages, for example. Hindi is very popular in Ankara uh, or even in Istanbul and many private universities which have come up. Once I was traveling from Trabzon by bus to Ankara and Istanbul, whole day. Uh, 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 and I could see uh, in the universities there, uh, wherever uh, there was a stop, uh, 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 you could see the fascination for Indian films. Indian films are very popular in uh, Turkey, uh, for example, uh, in the movie theaters, uh, so on and so forth. So this uh, uh, bond still remains important and we need to uh, strengthen uh, yes. this bond. Yes, thank you very much and I am also happy to hear it. Uh, you are about to update this version uh, with the recent developments, the relations between Turkey and India and publish it uh, again. So thank you very much, it will be a good source. So uh, Dr. Kutlutuk, my last question is uh, uh, for you. Uh, we talked about Turkish war of indep uh, independence, of liberation. How Indian people supported this war? How Indian people inspired this war for their liberation uh, independence movement? Now my last question is, how Indian liberation movement was seen in Turkey? What was the reaction? How they uh, received this uh, struggle uh, in India? Yes, uh, same position can be found in Turkey. A very important question, Your Excellency. Most of Turkish journalists, academicians, historians, support and politicians also support the struggle given by Indian people for their own freedom against British Empire. We can check many important areas and samples, but we have only two minutes. That is why I would like to give only one example. We have an important writer and you know important politicians. Maybe she is very famous in India, I am not sure, but you need to know this figure. That is Halide Edip Adıvar. This lady came to India to support your own you know, liberation. He gave many lectures in Jamia Millia Islamia University found in Delhi, as you know very well, and different parts of the India. If you check his, you know, uh, her speech, you can understand how Turkish people support Indian freedom movements. Please, I would like to hear support, uh, uh, advice two books because of time. The first one is Lectures given by Halde Edip, this was published by Jamia, uh, Conflict Between East and the West. Please read that book. The second book, which, was, which is advised by me for you, uh, written by Jawar Nehru, is a very important book to understand this question or in your relationship between each side. The name of that book was Glimpses of the World History. In that book, there is a you know, very significant chapter to understand relationship between each sides. The name of that chapter, please read if you have time. A new Turkey rise from the ashes. A new Turkey rises from the, its own ashes. Very significant point. Last one. 
Last one, only I would like to focus on this issue. Turkey and Indian people have some common ethical values. Each side focuses on the individuality, humanity, democracy, freedom, living together, respect each other. These are the, our common values, dear listeners. To understand this point, I would like to give only one example. Because of the 7th, 5th of the Independence Year of India, all over the India you can find a you know, term taken from Sanskrit. Vasudeva Kutumbakam, very famous, right? Which means all universe is one family, taken from Maha Upanishad, it's my research field. So, same, you know, weaves, it means equality among all people, respect all humanity, regardless of their, you know, religious, social background. So, same, you know, weaves found in our own culture. Our founder, Kemal Atatürk, also mentioned on this topic, which he said our excellency in his beginning of the speech. Atatürk said that peace at home, peace in all worlds. The same view. That is why thank you so much for your kind attention. So thank you very much. We are now out of uh, our time. Uh, Mr. Uh, Kemal Pasha. So first question was Mr. Kututürk. I want to ask you last question, but you have only one minute. In the uh, 100th anniversary of the Republic of Turkey, how do you see the future of Turkish-Indian relations in terms of uh, peoples, people-to-people -people contact. Just one minute, please. Yes. <laughs> then we go to the uh, Q&A session. Yeah, I wish I had more time uh, to answer your question, to just uh, give a telegraphic answer. The future is reasonably good. Uh, uh, we, we in India hope that uh, Turkey will prosper as a democratic, uh, secular uh, republic, uh, despite uh, uh, the intervention of the military at least five times. Most Indian uh, people, Indian leaders were disappointed when the military intervened in 1960, 70, 80, 90, and which continued to do that. But now I think that uh, trend has been broken and the democratic roots uh, and the structures and institutions uh, have taken their own uh, place uh, and uh, Turkey remains a secular republic. So. Uh, 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 like India, uh, which uh, uh, is aspiring to follow an independent, autonomous uh, foreign policy and rebuild uh, its economy in the face of sanctions from the United States. I must remind here that the United States imposed sanctions from 1974 to 2009, the longest sanctions which were imposed by any country for our decision to explore nuclear device by Mrs. Indira Gandhi our Prime Minister in 1974. They were lifted only when President Barack Obama visited uh, India. So in spite of American sanctions, in spite of American support to Pakistan, in spite of all the efforts they did, Please we made a self-reliant yeah. economy and we hope that Turkey also, despite being member of the NATO after Second World War, would uh, uh, rebuild its economy and uh, follow its autonomous foreign policy, which it is trying to do and uh, become self-reliant and play its regional role and also hopefully global role. Thank so you. thank you very much. It was a uh, not easy question, I know. Now we are open for Q&As. Uh, you can ask your question. You don't need to mention any uh, of the speakers. Uh, they can just uh, answer your question freely. But I am not today here to answer questions because I am the moderator. You can ask the questions only uh, to our speakers. Yes, please. The microphone, there is a lady. Uh, in front, uh, sh I think uh, she raised the hand. Yes, please, the microphone is here. Uh, first here, please. Oh, yeah, you, you have already. Okay, then second. Please ask your question. Uh, the microphone can go to the first row after that. Yes, we are listening to you. Uh, thanks for your insights. Like, I didn't knew this much uh, popular, I uh, mean, people-to-people uh, -people relations were there between Turkey and India. So coming to my question, uh, actually like the speakers mentioned, uh, people, I mean, these people, along with these people, people relations, uh, if we take a political or more cultural aspect, like even uh, the speaker mentioned the Vasudeva Kudumbagam and the Peace to All uh, by Atatur, and uh, 
for getting, for gaining that kind of peace scenario in both the countries. We all know that it's essential uh, to have a pr free press, to have uh, all kind of relations between like all equality among all the people, all every uh, particular communities in that country. So yeah, please make it shorter because we yeah. don't have time for, for other questions then. Just so ask would, the questions yeah, without yeah. any comments, like please. To know, I would like to know uh, what's your take on uh, authoritarian uh, Low ranked free uh, press index in both the countries, India and Turkey. Uh, can you explain? Uh, you, okay, okay. I, uh, yeah. I didn't you get see, your question. Uh, very both okay. uh, Turkey and India are uh, developing countries, uh, and uh, there is a vibrant press uh, uh, in both the countries, but at the same time, uh, there is this international press. Uh, uh, freedom index uh, where it is ranked but that is skewed you know if you study the western liberal political system they have their own pattern but despite all the restrictions in Turkey and in India the press is reasonably free you have free uh, 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 newspapers uh, largely free television channels uh, and various other uh, channels but much more can be done but much more needs to be done, more freedom uh, is to be given to the journalists, to the media, print media and electronic media, etc. Uh, but uh, uh, I am sure there is room for improvement in this uh, field. Okay, thank you very much. Our second question. Uh, Your Excellency, I want to take you away from politics to something everybody, every common person understands, the movies of, uh, and serials of Turkey. Today, in my small state, there are thousands of people who watch these serials, to name a few, Karapara, Ashk, Ertrugal, and many more. Though they run into 500 serials, people still watch. And that is a solid people-to-people -people attachment that is developing. And if you can help us see more of the values projected through these serials, there will be a stronger bond. Although I may be pronouncing their names, I was wishing you would bring Tuba by Yugustan to our country. I, I get your point. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, our uh, people from the Minister of Culture and Tourism are here. I think they took note what you said. Uh, uh, they, they have their notes now. Thank you very much. And another question? I, I, I may just add... Uh, the, uh, I did mention the Indian films in Turkey, but uh, I thought uh, that needs a mention. The Turkish sailors are in incredibly f famous and popular and they are making a huge impact. That's an additional area of convergence and uh, the popularity for uh, further development of bilateral uh, relations also. Okay, we, we have also more uh, say, say to tell, tell, but I will just uh, proceed to the next question because we have uh, less than three minutes now. We get only one last yeah. question. Yeah. There is a lady, Hello. yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, without comment, just the question because we have now about two minutes time. Yeah, the short question, like uh, how Turkey has remained secular when your other neighboring states are more of theocratic, uh, theocratic or a religious state? How Turkey remained as a secular state. What are, the, what are all the reasons you can say? Uh, yes, uh, to answer this question, we need to more time, but maybe I would like to say that uh, Turkish people welcomed Atatürk's reforms by all sides, okay? That is the reason. If you go north, south, east, west part of Turkey, in early time, you can see that Atatürk's reforms were welcomed by every people of Turkey because they observed that foreign powers came our country, they occupied different parts of Turkish, you know, territories. That is why we need to, you know, accept to understand this, you know, history. You need to read more things about our history. Otherwise, it is not easy to yeah. grasp this question. Yes. 
And then I would like to add, although uh, I don't have the right to tell, but just uh, uh, want to add some sentence. Uh, in order to know uh, how Turkey remains uh, an, as an island of stability in the region, in a, a war-torn region, uh, you have to check our policies as well. Our politics uh, is dynamic, in peace-oriented and humanitarian. So, uh, and Turkey is a very powerful country in the region. So, all those things and uh, our policies, foreign policies now, nowadays, it makes Turkey strong, and uh, also under a strong leadership, uh, Turkey remains as a, uh, a power and important country in the region uh, and stabilizing factor. So I yeah. would like to ask this. Yeah, one of the important reforms of the Atatürk was modernization. And uh, along with modernization was the secularization of the traditional uh, Turkish society for years, uh, centuries uh, under the caliphate. Uh, it had a traditional uh, background, uh, but Mustafa Kemal modernized it and uh, secularization of the society was an important plank, which still remains very popular. In spite of the AK party's rule, the Turks by and large are secular. If you visit there, you can feel it, that you know religion hardly matters for them when you meet a Turk uh, or any part of the Turkish society. It is personal for them. Whether he goes to the mosque or prays or wears hijab, it is personal. But uh, uh, like in India, we don't like to personally ask what religion when you meet first. So it is the same impression there. So that's how all the neighboring countries uh, from Iran uh, to all the Arab countries, they have been swept by uh, religious uh, fundamentalism or resurgence or uh, extremist groups, Wahhabism, for example, from Saudi Arabia. But uh, Turkey has remained immune uh, for a long time, and I'm sure it will remain uh, secular and uh, modern in its uh, perspective. There is absolutely no doubt in my uh, mind. I would like to recognize Professor Hasnain, the former Vice Chancellor of the Calicut University yes. here. He is in our midst here. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, your patience. Now our time is over. Uh, for additional question, if you have, we are still uh, here, but we have to uh, uh, make a stop now, right? Our time is over. Or can we have one more question? No, okay. Thank you very much.